Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the Grappling Rewind Podcast. On this week's show, we're going to recap Fight to Win, 111 in Chicago, Illinois. We're going to talk a little about the Brazilieros, a lot of BGJ-related news. We are also going to preview Fight to Win 112 in Fresno, California, Copa Podio, Iron Brown Belt, Submission Underground, and the ADCC Asian Trials. As always, I'm your host, Maine, joined with my co-host, Ryan Stark. See, people that don't know your voice aren't going to know you're messing with them. Uh, Josh, I guess. That's Josh. Me. Josh. Good to have you back, Josh. Thanks. So uh, let's kick it off with a little bit of news. Um, Craig Jones did a cool AMA on Reddit immediately following Lachlan Giles' AMA on Reddit, and it was really interesting. Did he post pictures of his butt? Uh, that was Instagram where he did that. Well, I'm just saying, did he post more pictures of his butt? He did not. That's Got a AMA. sweet ass. <laughs> That's sweet ass. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, the full combat jiu-jitsu card for EBI, the upcoming EBI 135, has been announced. A lot of names. Next. How do you feel, Josh? Combat jiu-jitsu should be completely scrubbed from the planet. I it's, would love to see more. No, okay. Other than the people competing in combat jiu-jitsu, who wants to watch that? Because the overwhelming majority of the interwebs is like, hey, bring back regular EBI. Yeah, I've been really surprised by like how oh, like usually the internet doesn't agree on a whole lot of shit. Man, overwhelmingly, everyone's kind of gone, I miss the old EBI. Jiu-jitsu with slaps is terrible. Not enough people get knocked out. That's the issue with it. Even when they do. You're doing this to make people move. Most people don't move. The get down rule, which, which again, makes me think of breakdancing. Uh it's it's silly. Like, don't get me wrong. You can compete in it. It's great, fine and dandy, whatever. It's just like but a weird thing. It's because we have MMA it's watered have, down MMA. Yeah, and it but it misses a lot of the fun pieces we have in MMA. So that whole card is out. There's a lot of names that are exciting in it. Hopefully, it is awesome. That's kind of all I can hope at this point. Um, moving on, uh, Keenan was training at Unity, so he's still kind of bouncing around gyms. We're not quite sure where he's going to end up at this point. I love how every week we do a Keenan update. I'm like, where's he going to end up? Where in the world is Keenan Cornelius? Pretty much. Ooh, I want to find out where he ends up. Because it's very, very rare we get like top level guys that bounce at like two. Well, two he doesn't frequent. have a gym, so he's got to, you know, get no, a feel. Cool. I'm just excited to see where he's going to end up. Like, where do you think he's going to end up? Uh, hopefully somewhere close. So, like can, East Coast, close or like? Yeah, I would like to train with him. That would not be have to slick. travel across the country. Uh, let's see. Yeah, anything else on that? No. Okay. The Polaris is having an open weight qualifier May tenth and eleventh. Um, so their qualifier is basically going to earn you a spot into the actual Polaris event. So that's exciting. Where? UK somewhere. God. Damn. I don't. I didn't make a follow up <laughs> note, Josh. I just looked it up. I was like, oh, that's really cool. They're running a qualifier. Um, I don't know exactly how you actually get registration into that qualifier, but it's basically. I think it's an eight man qualifier or sixteen man qualifier, and you qualify for your spot in Polaris, which I think is really cool. Yeah, sounds nifty. Uh, in other news, uh, Tex Johnson it looks like he's no longer with Unity, and he's looking for a team to register with for Worlds. Um, in other news, let's see. Isaac Doderlin, second American to win the Brasileiros. You want to talk about Brazil? We're gonna move right into Brasileiros. That's no. There's part of the news. Hey, spoilers. Eh. Uh, it's all on YouTube. You can comb through the fifteen no, no, thousand hours. No, of, you can't. Of jujitsu to try it's, to find it's it. It's on. I watched like, dude. I love jujitsu. Maine has an issue with the puzzle mats that they use. No, no, that's not even an issue. My issue is it's mat side. It's twenty nineteen. They have a mat side camera that focuses in and out and doesn't have the whole mat for a bunch of the mats. It, like, there are sections of the mat. They didn't square it up. Like, this is a major for IBJJF. Like, one of the four. You win this, you win a Grand Slam if you win one of these these four events. You and also get paid. Do you get paid? Yeah, remember? No, no, if you win Worlds. No, they did it for this, too. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's new. So, and, and it looks like it's filmed on, like, a 2010 potato. It's just not great, and uh, I tried to watch it for about. That's that's you're giving them a whole lot of credit, dude. I tried to watch it for about 15 minutes. I put it on my big ass TV upstairs on YouTube, and I was like, "This is unwatchable." It's literally if I can't watch it, I don't expect. And there's like six mats, all this like 10 or 15 hours of footage. Like it's unwatchable, and What's that's that super thing disappointing. When you were a child, that you put your eyes up. Kaleidoscope. To no, not no, no. that. Oh yeah, you have, Kaleid- and, you, and you flick and the you thing flick and it goes to the next ch- picture. Yes. That's what it was filmed on. That's kind of what it looks like. I think it's actually called a kaleidoscope as well. I think they're both yeah, called a kaleidoscope. Kaleidovision or some crap yeah. like that. But it was uh, so it's on YouTube. Uh, Somebody at Grappling Rewind and let us know what it's called. Yeah, 
that that'd be dope. Oh, in other news for at Grappling Rewind, we got in a bunch of patches. So shoot some ideas at us and how we should give them away. We would like to run a contest of some sort that gives away some patches. Um, and because I would love to, you know, give back to the community that listens to this show. If you're a dude, please DM at Grappling Rewind pictures of you in thongs. If you're a female, just send us a thumbs up. But mostly dudes in short, tiny underwear. Man. Like, I can either cut the segment of the podcast or, like, I'm going to get a lot of those. So, <laughs> yeah, d- DM us if you have a good contest idea. Um, we're throwing stuff out there. I got a couple patches to give away. I have a couple different sizes that I want to give away to some of the fans of the show, some of the listeners, if you are interested in that. I have DM a great us- idea. Best, best photoshopped picture of somebody with a broken back and then putting Maine's face on it. <laughs> How many times this man has said, I have a broken back. The first person to DM me that, I will send you a patch, by the way, if you are the first one. So, in other news, uh, you want to move right into the... Um, oh, yeah, apparently the IBJDF Euro Masters ran four hours behind schedule. And some of the matches didn't go till 1.30 in the morning. Oh, you mean Naga Europe? Europe? <laughs> Naga European Edition 2019. Apparently, a lot of people were like, hey, Naga's running really well. I was like, when did this start happening? But, you know, if Naga's running well, good for you guys, but Jesus. They finally started using Smooth Comp. I think everyone's finally starting to use Smooth Comp, and all the tournament systems are, like, finally running better, except for this one, apparently. So, I'm sorry, if you went until 1.30 in the morning, you overbooked your venue. Like, super hard. I would I would love to go at 1.30 in the morning. Oh, wait. I've done that before. At Naga. Connecticut or Boston? Jersey. <laughs> God, there's more of them. Uh, so, I think that's all I got for news. You want to move right into Brazilian Arrows, or you want to move something else? Sure, let's go into Brasileiros. All right, so Brasileiros happened. Um, it, <laughs> it happened. It, it was an event that happened. There was some shit that went down. People did some things with pajamas, you know. And the biggest there were some upsets. There were some not upsets. There were some returns of fantastical creatures that only appear once every third fucking lunar eclipse. You're talking about Mergali? Yeah. Okay, so Mergali's back. I think that, let's start with there. So We're Mergali, going all the way to super heavyweight, we're gonna folks. Start with super, we're going to start with, like, How about the, Nerga, Mer, Nergali? Mergali, just Merkin, folks, right? First place, super heavy, first place, absolute. Beat Kanan, beat Felipe no, Andrew. Not even beat Kanan, tapped Kanan. Well, guess what? He beat him. Didn't we have this discussion? We did have at, this like, discussion. At, like, the end of the year that if he beat you, he submitted you? Oh, yeah, last year he had a... Uh, he didn't 100% win every match. 100% sh- submission rate. But in 2018... But if he won, yes. he submitted you. Yep, in 2018, if Mergali... He didn't have that many matches. He had a bunch of losses, too, but, like, the he matches had two he won. losses. I feel like you say... said he was like, oh, he had a bunch. Maybe three. Okay, maybe At maybe most. Three. Well, I think he only had, like, eight or 12 matches or something. He didn't have that many matches overall. But, like, every time he beat a dude, he submitted you, and Mergali is back doing Mergali things. I want to say he had almost 30 matches, if we were looking at it correctly. I don't know, man. I don't remember. I think it's 30. So, Mergali's back. He's doing Mergali things. Uh, again, dude, tapping Duarte, it, in my eyes, puts him in the front runner for Because World is like coming up like a couple weeks from now. I, I just realized that there's no ultra heavyweight. <laughs> Go yep. down a little bit. See if there's... Nope, nope there's, there's no not. ultra heavyweight. So, we're looking at the results on Flo, <laughs> and Flo has just not posted the results for the ultra heavyweights whatever <laughs> whatever so uh yeah dude, i was super impressed with Margali. like he got a choke from the back a college choke from the back on duarte and i don't remember if we've seen duarte submitted at black Belt. i think gordon might have tapped him with a choke at nogi pans i think or something like that i don't know i think it was a really close match Maybe, but again, not a, not a do we see get subbed very frequently so it's cool to see Margali doing the ramp up for worlds we don't see him lose that frequently uh, yeah really at all He's been, like, pretty much a giant monster. But it's interesting, though, because now we can't Grand Slam it. Yep. Because Neither can Felipe Andrew. Nope. Because they got to be my Margali, which is interesting because those were two of the guys going into the Brazilieros uh, that had the ability to Grand Slam. You know what else is kind of fucked up? What? And I just realized that they only posted the adult male on Flow. They posted the female, too. Where is it? Right next to it. Right there. Oh. There's a drop-down box. <sighs> Thanks, drop down box. Sorry, Flo, for so, talking shit. In so you want to finish with the males or yeah? Let's go back to the males really okay. quick, and then we'll go to the females. So, I was just you know male black belt starting with the rooster weights. We Kleber have... Fernandez from Atos takes first. Rodney Barbosa takes second. Uh, Jose Carlos Souza Lima Sobrino. You know, I got all of those names. Third, as well as Juan Lopez da Silva under the light featherweight division. Thiago George had to take it for light feather since uh, Zhao Miao. 
did not. Uh, he got his guard passed by Alessandro Sodre. You should, there's a gif going around uh, Instagram that you should watch it. It is super impressive passing work from Alex- Alessandro. Yeah, it's it's very rare that you see either of the Meow's guards get passed. So that was pretty interesting. It was interesting how he did it too. He you see he, um he had a pants grip and you see him start to like run past the legs and like have to let go of the pants grip because he knows he can't maintain it and then he shoots his close side knee and is able to he's able to basically beat the the lower knee of Meow. It was again really impressive especially considering how infrequently we see the Meows get passed. Yeah. So uh Hiago George Alessandro uh, Sodre, Zhao Miao, and Lucas Gonzalez. That's one through three on light feather. Going to featherweight, again, talking about Isaac Doderlin. Uh, first place, second American to do it, right behind Lovato. Lovato. Yeah, Lovato is the say only that. other American to do it, which is crazy that in all the years of that tournament's happened, only two Americans ever won it. And so, but dude, Doderlin's been on a tear. He looked, he's keeps running into the meows like over and over and over again. He's not been too too successful but he to get keeps it done. running into paulo yeah, sorry running into paulo but Dude, i get the meows mixed up so i just call them the meows because i can never figure out who's where and here we go here's another thing you can send in to the dms the first person that se- sends the meow with the tooth that's paulo see there you go that's I know how he paulo knows. has the tooth send the tooth thing and again we'll we'll shoot you over a patch so when isaac doderlin uh Zhao gonzalez neto Bruno, Celio Costa de Mello, and Paulo Miao. That was one through three in featherweight. On, on to the lightweights. Lightweight. Igor Rodriguez on f- in first. Mateus Costa in second. Bruno Garcia in third. And Le- ooh, Leon Nilsson. Ooh, killed it. Uh, Marquez Ferreira Jr. Uh, in third. On the middleweights. Octavio Souza, which is his also his first Brazilieros. He's never been able to do it. Uh, this is his first one, and he beat Claudio Calazans by DQ. Uh, I think it was passivity, or something like that, or something weird. It was he, one of those. He got like, enough fouls where he got. Yeah, it was DQ. one of those kind of subjective ones. It was like, ah, okay, yeah. Uh, Marcos Vinicius de Oliveira Martins in third, and uh, Honeri da Silva in third as well. On a middle heavy, Hudson Mateus, medium heavy. Same thing, uh, Jose. <laughs> Cardoso in second, Carlos Andrade in third, and Henrique Moreira in third. Under the heavyweights. Vinicius Gazzola, uh, Demetrius Souza, Gerard Labinski, and Orlando Montero. Super heavyweight. Nicholas Mergali, Felipe Andrew, uh, Guillermo Santos, and Rodrigo Martins Hibero da Silva. There's no ultra heavyweight listed, so we're going to skip that. Onto the absolutes. Nicholas Mergali, Hudson Mateus, Kanan Duarte and Luis Eduardo Lopez de Carma. So onto the females here for the adult light featherweight division. Dinah Sena takes first. Misa Bastos takes second. So I was really I was really thinking that Bastos was gonna take her division, so it's really impressive. I'm not too familiar with uh Dinah Rodriguez. So you know, you get those sleepers that some of them like some of the Brazilians that can't get up here that's kind of why i'm super interested in the brazil arrows and I'm kind of why i'm disappointed there wasn't more coverage of it that's well, that's why sometimes they say it's harder than worlds and some of these divisions like the black belt divisions we saw it when we covered it last year there were like 50 60 people in each division it was ridiculous oh, yeah, i think the blue belts had i think a hundred and like 70 or something like blue belt middleweight i think had like 170 or something i think it was- super heavy and uh, rooster weight for the males had at least 20 people. Which is crazy at rooster weight. So, yeah, Brazilieros, well, again, you, you said you see a lot of people that can't get visas into the States for the world, so this kind of becomes their world championship, and you get a bunch of dope, crazy Brazilians that show up that you've never heard of, like Diana Rodriguez, and beats my Sebasto. So I was super, I'm super impressed with that results there. So that's one and two, and then Talita Alencar takes third, and Christina Barlin also takes third. In the featherweight division for the ladies, Fionn Davies keeping the dream alive of the Grand Slam. She is the first British Welsh. woman, UK, we'll say. Welsh, but yep. W- what what is get, Wales in? What is Wales in? Part of the UK. All right, then. Shut the I fuck up. I get corrected online. I know she's Welsh. It's time. fine and dandy, but guess what? This is how it was listed in the article. First British. 
Okay. British. Whatever. Like, I'm I'm aware some of you guys aren't cool with like what's going on in the whole Brexit thing, and some of you guys went out of it. I don't even know what's going on with it fully, but for right now, that's what it was listed. And then later it said UK, and I was like, eh, all right. Anna Carolina Schmidt in second, Larissa Carvalho in third, as well as Mariana De Freitas. On to the lightweights for the ladies. Bianca Basilio. No surprise there at all. Luciana Dos Santos Silva in second. Uh, Lariane or Lorraine? Lariane. We'll go with that one. That sounds fancy- fancier. Clarice Dos Santos Mendez. And uh, Libla or, oh God. Oh, I don't know what that accent so mark is. so bad. Libya. You got you got to talk to the mic now. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, third place. <laughs> anyway, be a mosquito coming in for the middleweight, being a fucking boss, taking first. Uh, Hinata Morea second, and Erica Almeida in third. Under the medium heavyweights for the ladies. Rafaela Bertolo da Silva. Too many names. Uh, Sabatha dos Santos, Melissa Stricker. And Monique Gonzalez. On to the heavyweight for the ladies. Fernanda Mayao. <laughs> God, these names. I'm dying already. Claudio Doval and uh, Fabiana Mendez. On to the super heavyweight for the ladies. Karina Santi, uh, Isadora Silva, Carla Albuquerque, and Mariana de Souza. On to the ultra heavyweights, division of two. Jessica de Silva Oliveira. And Joaquina Dos Santos Bonfim Neta. On to the absolute for the ladies. Be a mosquito. Taking first place. Yep. Told you, beast in it. Uh, Sabatha Dos Santos, Isadora Silva, and Jessica Da Silva Oliveira. So I assume over the next week that we're going to see more of these matches like come out and get chunked out so you can actually see them and find them on YouTube. But right now it's Monday at about um, 6 o'clock. And uh, there, it's it was just impossible for us to find a lot of these matches. So hopefully they come out. There's definitely some ones that I want to watch. Definitely some ones that'll be really interesting. Um, I want to see the Theon Davies and versus Anna Carolina because that should be really exciting. That should be lit. That would be super lit. So uh, anything, <laughs> anything else on this one, Josh? No. All right, moving on. Right into uh, Beat the Streets, which is what we thought was going to happen. Oh, my God. So, Beat the Streets. At 11 o'clock this morning. You know how excited I was? I was going to go into work a little late. I'm allowed to do that because I'm in charge. (laughs) So glad my bosses don't listen. So, Beat Um, the Streets was supposed to happen, and it was listed at – by the way, Rob and I thought it was going to happen this weekend, and then Rob texted me. He went, "Uh, by the way, that's Monday. And I went, What? And then uh, it was listed on Flow Wrestling as starting at 11 o'clock a.m. And I was like, okay, that's an annoying time, but like I can watch the replay at lunch, and that's fine. Or watch before the show happens. We can recap it. And then at about mm, 11.15 when I checked. You uh, checked at 11.15? Yeah, I checked at 11.15. Dude, I checked at like 10.15, and I'm like, why does this say 10.22 p.m.? And then it quickly changed the time frame to 6.22, and I was like, well, that's an awkward time, and fuck. And then it changed to 6 p.m. So it hasn't started yet But as of recording this show. So we can't recap it because it's literally in the future. Maybe we'll release a little extra. Maybe we might do that. Just a bonus show per a se. bonus or extra snippet or YouTube uh, capture something. We might do something know. like that. I might have, might have something in the Fucking works for that. Twitch thing that we don't have we will most likely as a release on patreon that we don't we don't have have patreon we will most likely release this as a separate bonus show later this week if we get a chance to if not we will touch on it next week um that's all i got for beat the streets you want to move on to fight to win yes all right let's move on to fight to win so the results for fight to win 111 in chicago illinois this event paid at a total of oh zero dollars and zero cents because it's not listed they are slacking on flow grappling this is kind of so that's weird. It's not listed. This is the first time ever. It doesn't have a, a listing for the payout. I want to say at least $30,000. Probably. The Chicago ones are really good events. They also have some big marquee talent. It wouldn't surprise me if they if it was a $30,000 payout or more. I will say for this match that is about to be told, uh, the arena, the arena, the area, whatever, the venue. Arena? It could be an arena. It could be a venue. It could be a Knights of Columbus. I don't know what it is exactly. Anyway... It looked really empty. By the end of the night, empty. Hmm. And Herberth Santos defeated Gutenberg Pereira by decision. And he becomes the fight-to-win heavyweight gi champion 
for the organization. He, you were so ready to jump on that. I was about to say it. Yeah, Josh, don't steal my shit. <laughs> Josh, I do, I do like three things good on this show. It's I like can I, say things. I edit pretty good. Okay, I have like intros. The intros pretty good at this point, and uh, I can read the brown belt, the black belt, submission of the night, and who gets the championship. That's what I do on this show. Okay, I'm down with that. So he does think, a lot of the back end stuff that nobody else wants I to do, do. I do all of the back end stuff. I do ninety nine percent of the back end stuff. Shh, no, you don't. We help ninety five percent of that. You, do, you guys do ninety nine point nine percent. I do a lot of the back end stuff. If you're talking, if you're emailing us or you're messaging us or and it's usually very mostly. seldomly will I respond to the messages because. Maine doesn't think I'm professional enough, and he's right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, that's not. I think that's like that's just facts, Josh. I can be professional when I need to be. Occasionally, I so, will show up in a suit to record one time. I will believe it. I will believe Homie, it when I see it. I'm professional. Okay, you feel like that little Dicky song. So that's what that was. Herbert Santos tell me. defeats Gutenberg Prayer via decision. Um, there was a lot of this match where Gutenberg did what kind of Gutenberg does for fight to win and force the top player to pass. That's really that's really. Gutenberg's. It wasn't exciting. Let's not lie about this match. This match was boring. Gutenberg. Gutenberg controlled the from, position from the bottom for nine and a half minutes. Right, not a whole lot happened. You see that Herberth is balding from this this match. You see he has a really creepy mustache from this match, and then he does like an esteem lock slash like reverse toe hold from that position and Gutenberg has to invert out of it. And that's how Herberth won. You don't have to watch the match now. You're welcome. I don't have a whole, I don't have a ton to add. I, j- I just saved you from a 13 minute clip. You're welcome. That was the match. So on to the next match, we had Catherine Perrette. Oh, now you're going to read the names. I can Let me I know back the, up. I know it's these time names, for Josh. Josh. To leave, and apparently Maine can just run it himself. Josh, the names that I know when we've covered a shitload, I can pronounce fairly well. <laughs> Any new names or weird names with or like or like accent marks, like I'm not your guy. But There's names, two K's next to each other. Can't say it. I can't say the last name. So All we have right. Catherine Perrette defeating Christian. Christian. Kristen. Really? Kristen. Say that last name. Michelson. Mickelson. Close. Mickelson. Close. To become the fight to win band. The fight to win bantamweight champion in the gi for the ladies. This one was slightly more exciting than the main event. There was a lot of uh, leg bars, <laughs> leg locks, uh, foot locks, things like that. A majority of the match was with some sort of leg entanglement. Pretty much like the last half of the match was just like dueling straight ankle locks and dueling leg attacks in the gi. Yep. For the for the most part. I mean, it was you just can like... watch this one. This one's more exciting. But that was pretty much it for the two uh championship. So Catherine Perrette takes the decision on that one. On the next match we have Mateus Deniz defeating Dufavo Batista via decision. Man, I don't even want to say any of the names. I want to let you just keep running. Well, I'm good for like see, dude, it's a Chicago card. Like I know a lot of the Chicago guys. And so, like, it makes the names really easy because I've heard them before. As soon as we get into, like, other places, like, I don't know, fucking, like, Baltimore, Chicago, I've got Philly, pretty good. Other places, I don't know, I don't know the local black belts. I don't speak English. Not so good. Anyway, next match, uh, Bones Johnson, Devante Johnson, defeated Matt Layton by decision. Now, we're not going to talk a whole lot about this stuff because there's three videos up. And I... Got to watch the Herbert match as it happened. I was like, all right, cool. Tomorrow I'll watch all of these because there are a lot of things that I want to see. I love watching Matt Layton compete. I love watching Bones compete. Oh, yeah. That was Seeing, the, the match you know, I was probably most excited about on the card. It was both those guys. Jeff Coran, like just going through a bunch of these names. Love watching a lot of these people compete. The videos are not up yet. And that's at no fault of, you know, fight to win or anything like that. Um, they're, they're getting up now, but so they weren't up this morning, and there's videos that are popping up now. So I assume by the time this show comes out, you'll probably be able to watch it all. Most so. of the videos will be up. Highly recommend you watch the Devontae match. Highly recommend you watch the. Um, let's talk about the John. Oh, sorry, next match we have Justin Falk defeating Aaron Brooks via decision. Jeff Coran defeats Steve Kinnison via de split decision. John Gutta defeats Gorgian, Gorin Gorin Relic by Mirlock, and that was submission of the night for the black belts, and it 
was ugly looking. Disgusting. You can, you can see it on uh on the Facebooks and Instagram. And dude, this mirror lock. It was a solid mirror lock, and Ugh. Goran was like, "Nah, I'm good." And I was like, "Oh, you're in a you're in a world of pain." Shortly, this and looked like the mirror lock that Frank Mir actually hit on. Was it Pete Smell? Snell? Cell? Cell. It wasn't even Pete Cell. It wasn't. It was. Pete Cell's a lightweight, isn't he? Pete Cell is a middleweight. It was on some guy. Frank Mir hit it years and years ago, and I got that in the mirror lock. It's that overhook Americana from the guard. I want to say it was Petey Williams, but that's a professional wrestler. I thought the guy's name was Pete. It was. Oh, it God. probably is not. It was one of the guys from. We're going to get a message from someone. It was like, it's this guy. But like, I bet it was. Simon's going to say something. Yeah, he that's will, who it's going to be. Uh, so, uh, so wait, let's talk about like, finishing here. So John gets this mirror lock in and starts like cranking, and Goran looks like. He's like kind of trying to defend it, and then you see the elbow kind of turn out, and Goran keeps trying to defend it, and you see John just go, "Oh, I got, guess I got to break his arm." I and was like, right. It's Pete Williams. Pete Williams. But okay, Petey Pete. Williams is also close. part you're, of the pretty close of uh, the Canadian destroyer fame. All right. So moving on to pro wrestling. So really interesting submission. You see Gor- Goran, Goran, not tap, and then John kind of gives it a little extra. It crank. looks like his muscle shifted. Well, it looked like his, to me, it looked like his elbow dislocated. That's what I saw. All I know is that shit didn't look pleasant. Like, the angle I saw made me go, oh, Like, the noise I made when doing commentary for SAGC when the knee bar happened, <laughs> that noise, that, <laughs> that's the noise I made watching this clip. Anytime. Uh, uh, yeah, we can talk about that, Josh. Okay. Yeah, we're doing commentary again for SAGC. We are doing commentary again for SAGC in, on, uh, May, on June, June 23rd. So if you're in the area... I'll be on the microphone. Oh, my God. I can't believe it's you. <laughs> I'm in there, like swimwear. I yeah. also applied, but I wouldn't be surprised that they were like, God, don't pick this guy. You applied super late, too. I didn't apply super late. I applied, like, over a month ago. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I you... just put Ric Flair's pr- promo oh where God. he's talking about... <laughs> The fact, the fact Jeff that you Lyon. get selected for anything <laughs> astonishes me. The fact that we do this show and it's lasted this long astonishes me. It's because a majority of the beginning of it was me, but then Emil and other people pop in. They're like, oh, it's refreshing that we don't have to listen to that asshole all the time. You'd be surprised how people miss you. I get messages like, where's I'd Josh? Be, I'd be surprised, too. I was surprised. I was like, really? Okay. So this is def- deservedly submission of the night for the black belts on this card. It was a absolutely disgusting submission that I highly recommend you go back and watch because uh, just good jiu-jitsu, just really good mirror lock. It's hard to get the angle on the mirror lock like that, and it's impressive that uh, Gorman was able to fight it for that long. I almost did it to Rob this morning. It's a disgusting show. It's he a called disgusting me an submission. asshole. I do it to my students as well. Because they don't know it's there, and you just show them, like, what was that? It was like the mirror lock. Like, I'm putting this wait. on audio, by the way. I took down Rob like four times today. Yeah, because you're fat right now. No. You gotta lose that weight. No. First of all, not really that fat. Second of you're all, not really. you've lost a bunch of weight. Second of all, it's because his arm is hurt and <laughs> he couldn't lean on me. And he's been not training because he had a thing removed from his head. So, oh, yeah, the, this, the thing. Yes. So, anyway, let's keep going. Jamil Fakori. Did I say that right? Probably I, not. Okay, cool. Uh, defeated Jeff Russell by decision. Leo Perez defeated TK Oates by decision. Dom Hoskins, who I think might have more matches now than Troy Everett. He does. Dom has 17 matches on Fight to Win, and Troy only, in quotes there, has 15 matches. Well, Dom has another one coming up, but Troy has two of Troy them has coming. two or three coming up. He's got the Fresno like, dude, one next him week. Him and Dan Dykeman, both the guys on Team Sleep, are on like team no sleep team no team sleep team, team no sleep. sleep team no sleep have matches like every other week which is why again we like covering those guys so much because we get to watch them like grow and you get to watch the same guys compete week after week as a analyst and as a guy that talks about jiu-jitsu that's one of the most exciting things to do is you watch guys like guys like dom guys like troy guys like dan compete every single week. that's why i like i like Herberth. i mean Yep. For other reasons. So Dom Hoskins defeated Jeff Serafin by decision. Daniel uh, Wonderlay defeated Josh Passini by decision. Kelly Johnson defeated Joseph Oliva by decision. You're moving it around crazy. like Steve Patterson defeated Blake Klassman by armbar. Mike Sim defeated Michael Hagel by knee bar. Perez Figueroa defeated Jimmy Santiago by toehold. And that was Friday the Night for the Black Belts. Bob Hemmerich defeated Brandon... Uh, Bachelor 
but oh, that is actually the word. That's correct. Uh, by decision, and Leonardo Arujo defeated Caio Oliveira by decision. On to the brown belts. Dan Humkey defeated Daniel Villano- Villanueva. Yes. Hey, yeah, by bicep slicer. And that was submission of the night for the brown belts, and he retains the fight to win Masters brown ba- brown belt welterweight title. I that feel like I've gotten is... I've gotten worse at that as we've done this show. That is a mouthful still. Uh, Mike Aguinaldo defeated Jimmy Williams by split decision. Jeremy Hastings defeated Mike Layton by knee bar. That was fight of the night for the Brown Bus. That's Matt Layton's brother. Not a good night for the Nate Laytons. Uh, Yosef Algul. <laughs> Def- I don't know why I found this Defeats so funny. Jim <laughs> Spritz via decision. Derek, Derek Mallert. Maller- uh, Mallert defeated Tim Martin by decision. Aaron Rodriguez defeated Nick Spacek by armbar. Josh Chavez defeated Brian Bowman by split decision, and Paul Doe defeated Juan Sandoval by toehold. On to the purple belt results. Dylan Faldudo defeated David Garcia by split decision. Christopher Nicholson defeated James Johnson by decision. Idris Sinmola defeated John Patarelli by decision. Venicia Silva defeated Casey McWerther by choke. And that was submission of the night for the purple belts. John Rogosich defeated Robert Calvo by decision. Robert Ellison defeated Benny Dahl by decision. Mike DeMakes defeated David Heineman by split decision. And that was Friday the Night for the Purple Belts. Dania Silver defeated Samantha Garcia by footlock. Tommy Cho defeated Quentin Park by decision. And on to the kids' results. Durango Vallis defeated Carter Hinman by decision. And that was fight of the night for the kids. Maya Vives defeated Sophia uh, Preho, Prohodico? Prohodico by decision. Is I wonder is I believe that's his daughter, yeah. Okay. Uh, Coco Blackwell defeated Mariah Malinowski by armbar. And that was submission of the night for the kids. Just and teens. Kids. There's not kids and teens, just kids. <laughs> so that does it for Fight to Win 111 in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, the videos are getting out now, so highly recommend. There's definitely watch some videos em. that I want to go go back and watch, uh, specifically Most the, the Jones, the Devontae Johnson match versus Matt Layton. And um, I want to watch the rest of the John Gutta match with uh, Gordon. So on to our preview of Sug Submission Underground Eight, presented by Chael Sug. Sug, Sug. That's what it's called. Everyone calls it Sug. Sug. All capital. All capital. Submission Underground. Uh, this event is back on Fight Pass, so it's a lot easier to watch than the last time, which I think it was actually. It was on Flow before. It was on Flow, and then it was not on Flow for one or two events. I think then we've it was only on covered YouTube. it. Yeah, it was on YouTube. Then it was on Chael Sonnen's like personal page or something like that. His personal one YouTube. And then uh, now it's back on Fight Pass, which is awesome because... Uh, it was never on Fight Pass, so it can't be back on Fight Pass. It's now on Fight Pass. Josh, it's now on Fight Pass. So now you can actually watch it easily. The video will be up immediately. Like, I like, I'm like i a big fan of Fight Pass for grappling events. Now they have... <laughs> well, dude, think about what Fight, ha- I ju- Fight I Pass just, has now. I just like how it's like, now you can watch it easily. If you think about it legitimately... Okay, so let's say you subscribe to Flow, right? That's what a hundred and twenty dollars a year. Uh, one forty nine, I think. Okay, so there's that. Now you have to buy Fight Pass. Ninety six dollars and seven and ninety seven cents a year. Okay, yeah, and you can't even watch pay per views on that anymore. Let's not talk about that. And then, uh, what else is another thing that you have to subscribe to? A uh, subscription service for jujitsu. Um, you can do YouTube Red. Facebook doesn't have anything. Uh, Copa Podia has pay per views. BJJ Stars has pay per views. Um. So right now, let's just say with the two big ones, with Fight Pass and Flow Grappling, you're looking at like almost $300 a year. Yes, I pay that. Just to watch That's what this I pay. stuff. Yes. I'm, and I'd you probably wonder pay f- why, people wonder why there's pirating still. It's because they don't want to pay these absorbent fees. And this was a big thing going into like uh, people wanting to watch UFC pay-per-views. You have to... One, subscribe to ESPN Plus, and then you have to pay the fee. I haven't even figured out how to do it yet. I haven't. I don't have. You ESPN. have to get ESPN Plus. I don't have ESPN Plus now. You I'm have to like, pay I'm, for it. It's like the, I don't care enough about MMA anymore to do it. And I just like I can't do it anymore. Like I That's watched, why people pirate it. I watch too much grappling now. It's like I don't care enough about MMA to do it, and I can't follow the schedule. And like there's... nine times out of ten, most of the gifts are up on some website or another within thirty seconds of the match. I right. think. <laughs> Don't don't blow Reddit's cover like that, brother. Love Reddit. So, onto a preview of Submission Underground Eight. These are always really interesting events. There's always some very interesting MMA matchups, which was kind of fun last time. So, 
Main event here, we have Jake Shields versus... Austin Vanderford. This is a this is a really interesting matchup. The next matchup we have uh, Jake, Jake Ellenberger versus Diego Sanchez. This is fun, actually. Like Diego Sanchez is a fucking monster grappler. He's weird. But like, dude, think, look about him in Grappler's Quest. Like how he, dude, used to be like. Do you remember sh- when he went toe to toe with Marcelo Garcia in ADCC? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like he's a really fucking. He's a legitimate grappler. But everyone for, kind of forgets that's like newer. They're like because he's like, the yes striker. cartwheel guy. Even before that, like his most recent, like he has not knockout wins in the UFC. Everyone kind of forgets how a mo- yeah. like a submission grappler, how much of a monster he is. So stand him wangs. This should be a lot of fun. I think Allenberger is much bigger than he is, though. But he wins. Both fought them. at one seventy. Yep, yeah, Sanchez fought at fifty five and like forty five. Forty five. <laughs> Ellenberger's Ellenberger's not making forty five. So next match we have Fabiano Scherner versus Frank Mir. This will be. Interesting, because we've seen Frank again in submission only, not submission only matches, in super fight matches versus um, Forrest Griffin at Black Belt CBD. I think that's the last time I've seen Frank. Did he, was he in a quintet matchup with Ishii? No. Yeah, he was. He had a, he had a he had a. Um, oh yeah. Yep. Yes, and he lost. He did lose. They got he got DQ'd. I think in that matchup for passivity. It was so boring. It'll be interesting to see how Scherner deals with Mir and Mir deals with Scherner. This. I think Scherner was last on Sug, and we saw him wristlock Tim Sylvia. I think it was the last time I've seen Scherner. He might have been on a fight to win or another Sug, but I believe that's the last time we've covered him or the last match I've seen from that him. That we can remember. Yeah. So next match, we have Dennis Hallman versus Craig Jones. I hope they both come out in Speedos. It, it wouldn't surprise me with Hallman. I, it, it wouldn't surprise me with Jones. Oh, not. He's going to come out I want in, both in the leopard them. print thong. Oh, God. And then we'll see a double, like, we'll see a Shoney Carter match. All over again. There's going to be at least three testicles shown in this match. Yeah, dude. I honestly think like this is this. Sh- Craig should take this. Like Holman's a good grappler. Don't get me wrong. Duh. Holman's like fifty. Is he? No, he's not. He's no, like he's. 40. I think he's in his forties. But yeah. still, like, duh. You have a current like ADCC level guy that literally has a bid to ADCC versus a an, an MMA guy. Like it's, it's Sug does this a lot and so it'll be interesting to see. It always is interesting to see how it lines up, but a lot of times you see the uh, the MMA guy kind of get like uh, by the jiu-jitsu guy. So next match we have Pat Healy versus Gilbert Melendez. And then we move into the tag team matches. We have Team Hart slash the base versus Team Kern and Impact Jiu Jitsu. Courier. Courier. We have Team Combat Martial Arts versus Team Straight Blast Gym. Team Combat Arts, by the way. Team- Not Team Combat martial arts. Team combat arts. Combat arts. Jeez. And then you have uh, Sean. Oh, you passed it to me I because of that. I passed it to you, Josh. Yep. Sean Kia Tavong uh, Charion. Yeah, there we go. Close enough. Uh, versus Micah Breakfield. And then we have Team Impact JJ slash Nemesis versus Team Great Sibata. And we have Team 10th Planet Springfield versus Team BTT Happy Valley. So, interesting card. Should be streaming on Fight Pass. Um, Looking forward to it. Should be. I, I love watching. I love watching a bunch of the guys on the main event card. And the tag team was pretty fun last time. Honestly, it was still kind of hard to follow, but it was a lot. Of, it was entertaining. A lot of these matches are mixed partners, so male and female. Oh, the tag teams are. So there is male and female in the in the top match, and then there is uh, all female, and then all female, and then all male. Sweet. So that does it for that preview. Woot. So one more preview of the ADCC Asian Trials. This is the only Asian Trials as the previous Asian Trials in Kazakhstan was canceled. So this will feature all of the Australian grapplers, the Oceanic grapplers, and the Asian grapplers trying to make their bid into ADCC. We would do a preview of this, but but, but when you click 404, on, not found. Yeah, but when you click on the ADCC website and you click over to registrations, um, it's been down for about a week now, so I can't. It just gives you a 404 error, 412 error on the website, so you can't actually go and find that out. If someone does actually have that information, please DM me. I would really appreciate actually a link to something with that because we're super interested. I love ADCC. This is the last qualifier, I think. And then after that, there's one more round of invites to like fill out the divisions, and then that will be the final roster for ADCC. I have my tickets. If you do not have your tickets, I highly recommend you get your tickets. Seth Thanos from Fight to Win 
and uh, the other people on the Fight to Win crew are producing that event, and it's going to be, as the kids say these days, lit. So uh, highly recommend you watch that. Hopefully the, it will be streamed in a location. Again, I will try to put out the streaming location once I'm able to find it. Uh, it doesn't look like it's on Flow. It potentially is on YouTube or Facebook, but I, I haven't seen anything from that yet. Um, I might actually reach out to some of the competitors to figure out. Again, if anyone knows where that is streaming, please let me know so that we can try to cover it in more detail next week. That happens on May 12th. So on to our preview of Fight to Win 112 in Fresno, California. This event is main evented by a 190-pound black belt gi match, Gabriel Argus versus Mateus Deniz. Who we just saw this week. I'm so excited about that. That's a good-ass matchup. We saw Argus versus J- Craig Jones at Grapple Fest recently, and we've seen Deniz fucking every other weekend for a while now. Argus has not been, uh, not been looking as good as he normally does. He's got the ADCC bid, though. Mm-hmm. But him getting him getting beat by Jones by Craig Jones in the Gravel Festival and actually got choked and finished was really interesting. He's been kind of hot and cold, but again, he's another dude that the black belt level you can see turn it up and and get it done. But I think I would favor Mateus in this one, just based on recent performances. Yes. So under the next event, we have a co main the co main event is Angel Lopez versus Tom Knox. We have a 195 pound black belt gi match. Hudson Mateus versus Gabriel Almeida. 175 pound black belt no gi match. Edwin Najmi versus Dom Hoskins. That's a fun-ass matchup. That'll be good. Dom's coming off a couple, I think, uh, win, he loss, just win, won, loss, win. He just won his last match. Yes. Yeah, so that's. <clears throat> I think Edwin lost his last match at uh, Kasai, I think. Yep. Versus Tinoco? No, versus uh, Dante Leon. Versus Leon. He got choked. Yep. And then next match, we have a 145-pound Nogi match. Vanessa Retes versus Sarah McMahon. That'll be fun. Wrestly. 150-pound Brown Belt Gi match. Josh Cisneros versus Dan Dykeman. I'm super excited about this, dude. Dan's fun to watch, and Josh is the guy at Purple Belt that had that slick-ass teepee choke in like two seconds. He's a brown belt now. And they're mixing it in up top. That's very interesting. Yep. That would be a fun-ass matchup. Okay, carrying 225-pound black belt gi match. Chuck Rooney versus Albert Aguirre. 200-pound black belt gi match. Eduardo Crema versus Victor Cervantes. 185 pound black belt gi match. Jonathan Smith versus Jeff Shields. 175 pound black belt gi match. Bruce Tafoya versus Brian Moody. 162 pound black belt no gi belt. <laughs> Dude, you and I love the weird weight yeah, classes. Yeah. I love it. Dennis Abrego versus Nick uh, Borbin. 155 pound black belt gi match. Shane Torres versus Cole Franson. Cole Franson's the guy that recently beat uh, Bill Cooper. I think on Fight to Win, maybe? Uh, 140 pound black belt gi match. Cliff Sabro versus Art Vega. 100, 260 pound brown belt gi match. Frank Ruiz versus Dennis Andra. And then we have a bunch of other brown belt gi matches. We also have. Um, where I know I? Troy just got added to it, so and that's why I'm trying to find out where, on here? where Troy's matchup is. Uh, he just got the matchup. Yeah, recently. he just posted it. So looks like a fun card. Highly recommend you watch it. It looks like it's listed as an 8 p.m. start time uh, on Flow Grappling. So I'm not sure if that's 8 p.m. California. I'm guessing it is. Fingers crossed. It's 8 p.m. California or or 8 p.m. Eastern. Because if, if it starts at 8 p.m. California, it's going to start at 11 p.m. Our One, time, uh, yeah, eleven. Which it won't is, finish which, until like three o'clock in the morning. If that, if if four, three or four. So it's gonna be a late evening for us. Uh, that's all I got for that one. Anything else, Josh? No. So that does it pretty much for this week on the show. I used a super weird voice right there. I don't know why. Cause you're fucking weird, dude. We almost did this in like one take. The first like thirty five minutes of the show was if, like if one you wouldn't take. have stopped it, we could have done one take. We, I got I got worried about the saving of the recording because. Uh, I just got. I get. I get nervous about that after about fifteen minutes. That I haven't saved yet. Got nervous, 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 nervous. Look at me. I'm. I'm in work clothes. I'm in work clothes, Josh. You're wearing a button up. That's work clothes, Josh. I'm wearing a bleached out T-shirt. You are. That you has a, my work on it. You have a giant fucking black eye. Don't mess with ladies in jujitsu, dude. It's like you. I saw, I saw the picture on on uh, I think Instagram or Facebook. He had like a little black eye. I was like, oh, it sucks. He had a black eye. And oh, then no. Josh you walks ch- into my house and he is like. Like the the boxer black eye underneath the eyelid, it's all swollen. I was like, "What the fuck happened to no, you?" Th- the picture didn't do it any justice no, as not at to all. what it looked like. It was so swollen, and I took the end swell from the gym, and I like crushed it down. It was so bad. Yes, I could without looking down, I could see my eye, the bottom of my eye, like popping out. How swollen yeah, it was. The picture didn't look bad at all. I was like, "Ah, oh, he got a black eye a little bit." And then you walked into my house, and I was like, "What the fuck happened to you?" 
Uh, one of my uh, employees told me it looked like a beat up vagina. Jesus. <laughs> so this is why I save it to the end of the episode. This like this stuff gets cut, but I'm super tired, so I'm probably gonna forget, and that's gonna get, that's gonna stay in there. Uh, uh, I missed you, Josh. Good. I missed you. Good. You've been busy since getting your black belt, doing black belt stuff, competing Just all the time, competing and working out and destroying my body slowly. But yeah, surely. you're working out now. You're like doing a little bit. Of I've always worked out. I love how it's like you're working out now. It's like I've always worked. out. Yeah, but out. you now look like you're working out as opposed to like the Josh that shows up sometimes that just looks like they don't give a fuck and doesn't do anything except like eat chips and watch sumo and oh, try to God, emulate chips. those sumo guys. I love me, dude. Uh, sumo chips. Josh comes in sometimes, and I'm looking at you like, ooh. Heart disease is coming, boy. And then uh, you come in now and you're like, you're fucking working out. Pie Your traps is so are tasty. Pie is so good. Pie and fried foods and things that don't involve chicken breast or broccoli. I hate broccoli. I love broccoli. Get you fit, though. I had, you I fit. had broccoli chips today. Ew, that sounds disgusting. Got them from TJ's. Shout out Trader Joe. If you want to hit me up with a sponsorship, I will rep the shit out. I will definitely wear a, a fucking, Trader Joe patch. No, not even a Trader Joe's patch. I will walk around all the time in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Like I fucking love TJ's. TJ's is my shit. If you don't have a Trader Joe's, I'm sorry. Um, that place is the shit. It's pretty great. They have great sauces. They have really great sauces. They have also super random treats. The one thing that I don't like at Trader Joe's uh, is their cookie butter. It is not as good as the Biscoff's cookie butter that you can get at Target. It's a very strange thing to dislike. Have you ever had cookie butter, brother? It's pretty great. Yeah. Well, have you had it from Target or have you had it from TJ's? I don't know, man. I don't remember. Because the shit from Target shits all over the stuff from TJ's. God, I want to eat so badly. So we got a bunch of other events coming up if you've made it this far in the show. Uh, Fight to Win Reno's happening. Uh, Coke Podio is running an event. Looks like this weekend. I can't. We can't really find. We any, don't fucking know what it is. I can't find any information. Looks like it's the preliminaries for the Iron Brown Belt, and there's some blue belt stuff happening. Finishers um, this month. Finishers this month. Polaris, Polaris this month. Sogi Two is this month. Uh, Combat Jiu Jitsu is happening the end of this month. Um, it's a, we've got a dude. Next couple weeks are finishers are just rise. amazing. Dude, we, the Reno card for Fight Man to Win looks War. a lot of fun, and the Portland card. I haven't looked at a ton of, but I've seen some of the matchups. Uh, looks like a lot of fun. As well. SAGC. SAGC. We're doing commentary for that at the beginning Third of next Coast month. Grappling. Yeah. Oh, we're going to cover, you know, the world's in there. Is that on there? No. You didn't put that on there? I forgot. It wasn't listed. I haven't updated this list like big in a while. Go to the IBJF yeah, website. It's, it's it right might be in on there. the bottom. Subspectrum. Here. Ultimate no. Matt Warriors. No, that shit's in July. Oh, you have it in there without the dates on it. That's yeah. why. So that's our update for our list. So. That does it for this week on the Grappling Rewind. I am, as always, Maine. Join here. I am occasionally Austin Jones or Emil Rosada or Ryan Stark, but most of the time I'm Josh Weinstock. You forgot Matt, but you know. Um, Matt hasn't been on this. He's done a remote recording. Oh, that is true, yeah. but it was never released. It was released. Sometimes we, we, had to, we had to redo the whole thing and then Very we rarely it. I'm Matt. There we go. Yeah. And uh, we are the Grappling Rewind, and we will see you on the mats. Bye. If you like the show, please consider sharing it on Facebook with the folks at your gym. It's the best way that we grow the show and we really appreciate it. You can reach out to us on email. We also have Instagram. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We have Google+. Plus. Until that shuts down. We have a website. If you have an event you would like to have us cover, please let us know. If you have a name, like most people do, and you'd like to have us stop butchering it, let us know. Reach out to us. The show is also available on YouTube, Spotify, in addition to iTunes and every other podcast service. We very much appreciate your time and thank you.